Well, welcome back to Roya and Rescue. Today, we are answering a question that came in from a student in regards to the differences between heat stroke and heat exhaustion. Now, it's uh, getting closer to June. It's been in the 40s here in Michigan, so it's not really been all that warm yet. But I can almost guarantee you we're going to have some hot, humid days in not too many weeks to come. And it's probably going to be a really good idea if we touch on this topic and maybe pinpoint what it is that we're going to be looking for that should tell us when there's truly an emergency and when we should call 911. Well, first of all, let's explain a little bit about heat exhaustion or heat emergencies as a general rule. Most of the time, it's because a person's temperature, their core temperature, is actually getting higher than 98.6 it's 100.6, so basically they're getting a, a fever, if you will, but they're getting it from external environmental reasons. Their cooling system is not keeping up with the amount of heat generated. They are um, getting to a point where they're probably using a lot of their uh, fluids to try to sweat in order to surface cool their body and get the, pre the temperature down. So they're losing a lot of vital fluids. And the electrolytes, sodium, potassium, and so on, are starting to get out of balance. Therefore, it's starting to make different symptoms like cramping, nausea, heart palpitations, possibly, headache, feeling um, very fatigued, weak, and so on. Those are the first signs and symptoms of heat exhaustion. This is not a life-threatening emergency, but they are some signs and symptoms that should be paid attention to so that the person can get into a cooler environment, even if that means just going under the shade of a tree or into a nice breeze out of direct sunlight and get lots of fluids into their body, drinking lots and lots of water. Someone asked me, well, what about Gatorade or sports drinks? You gotta be careful. It's not necessary and the person really needs fluids. Some of the Gatorades have an electrolyte balance and so they might you know, possibly absorb some of it a little faster than normal water. But the whole goal is to never really allow ourselves to get to that point of dehydration. We should be drinking at least eight to six, uh, six to eight um, glasses of water a day normally. If it's hotter, if we're working outside, if we're uh, participating in normal athletic behavior that causes us to sweat and burn more of that fluid off, we should maybe be drinking closer to eight, 10, and 12 glasses of water a day and if we're drinking a caffeinated beverage, we should be replacing that caffeinated beverage with two additional same size glasses of water to replace what the caffeine is getting out of our body through speeding up the whole, um, basically the, the uh, <clears throat> diuresis, if you will, uh, process. Now, talking about when does it go to heat stroke? Heat exhaustion is the precursor to heat stroke. If we don't get out of the environment, if we don't get cooled down, if we don't get enough water in and stay hydrated, the next step is the body going into heat stroke, which is a dangerous level of temperature. The person is literally cooking inside to a certain point. I don't want you to think that it's like eggs frying in a pan per se, but it's hot enough that it can be causing permanent brain damage. Hence why we call it heat stroke. It has to do with the brain especially. Um, <clears throat> this is going to be characterized by someone who is now gone from wet and sweaty to dry and hot. They are going from a level of feeling sick and anxious and that they need to get water and rest to a point of decreased level of consciousness and even then going into unconsciousness. Heat stroke is definitely different than heat exhaustion but the two are closely related. So it's gonna be vital for us to nip this in the bud by hopefully preventing it by staying hydrated. Allow yourself to climatize to the environment that you're going to be in. In other words, if you're used to air conditioning environment, don't go to a hot, balmy, tropical environment and, and just bust right into you know, two straight days of, of basketball or playing soccer. You gotta allow your body to climatize and be able to adjust and get your hydration um, in there. Drinking alcohol also helps to dehydrate. Drinking lots of caffeinated drinks helps to dehydrate. So when we replace those fluids, we're replacing them with good water or a low sugar, low caffeine or no caffeine hydration drink that might even have a little bit of sodium potassium mixture to help us to absorb those fluids better and utilize them better. The treatment for heat exhaustion was already given to you. Out of the environment, giving them something to drink, let them cool down. 
Heat stroke is a life-threatening emergency, and they must be cooled down immediately or else they're going to have permanent damage, if not death. We need to activate 911 immediately. This is easy to know what to do because they have a decreased or no level of consciousness. They're unconscious. We want to move them into a cooler environment and then loosen up any tight restrictive clothing. Then the goal is to get them cooled down. So if there's a garden hose available, buckets of water, a nearby stream, then none of which are going to cause a threat for drowning, we are going to try to cool this person down. If you've got a water hose or water bottles, drench their whole body. You don't have to take their clothes off, but you can drench their clothing. This allows them to help to radiate out the heat, cooling their core temp down. As they become conscious, if they become conscious, do not give them anything by mouth because they are already in a state of emergency. We're going to have to do that at the hospital with IVs. We don't want them to vomit and choke on the vomit or have any other problems. So um, then just support them with the airway, breathing, circulation, shock management. Keep them cool. Call 911. Cool them with water if at all possible by getting over their body. If you have cold packs, pop the cold packs, put them underneath their armpits, around their neck, anywhere that an artery actually flows over. This will help to cool the blood as it passes by the cold pack and cool the body uh, internally as well. So I hope this was helpful. Thanks for the good question. That's an interesting question about heat exhaustion versus heat stroke. I hope this helped. Stay cool. Have a fun summer. Go forth and rescue. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.